as we get set for the Mets season opener next Thursday in Washington against the Nationals. Pleasure to welcome in right now James McCann, who will be behind the plates catching Jacob deGrom that day. James, thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Appreciate that. And it's about a month into wearing a Met uniform and uh, officially being a Met now. So has it been everything that uh, it was cracked up to be, everything uh, that you thought it might be? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a, a really good first month. Um, you know, the the organization, the the people within the organization, uh, I, I couldn't be happier right now. It's, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's interesting. There, there's an old saying with catchers that uh, when you're catching some pitchers, it feels like you're just sitting in a rocking chair. And that might go for Jacob deGrom. I'm not sure. But I know one of the things you, you had said coming in, that you wanted to kind of be in his back pocket and know everything about him. So how has that relationship gone? It's gone really well. Um, you know, Jake's a, a phenomenal guy. Uh, he's he's pretty low key. Um, I mean, the guy's a, a, a superstar. Uh, everyone knows who he is. Yet uh, he, he doesn't act like it. He's um, he's he's always joking around. He's always having a good time. Um, but he he gets his work in, and and he does. You know, he 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 works hard. That speaks volumes, too, I think, when you have a guy like him and, and Francisco Lindor as well, too, that uh, guys who are really true leaders who kind of share, you know, their uh, their knowledge and, uh, and uh, you know, sp spread that throughout the team at the same time. It, uh, I think it helps everybody. It does. It, uh, it helps take, take a good team over the top and make them a great team when um, your superstars are guys that are, are down to earth and – uh, you know, involve everyone on the team. Um, you, you know, no one is, is – no one person is bigger than the team. No one person is bigger than game. And uh, when your superstars act uh, the way that, that these guys do, it, it creates a, a really good uh, clubhouse, you know, atmosphere. And everyone has talked about Lindor in that regard, but your manager the other day, Luis Rojas, uh, spoke about you and said, outstanding catcher, outstanding clubhouse guy, outstanding individual, and a real team leader. So uh, I didn't mean to embarrass you, but that's that's got to make you feel real good because obviously that's something that you, uh, that you want to aspire to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, that does make me feel good to, to hear that and that uh, in my short time, I've, I've been able to have an impact like that. Uh, you know, my my opinion is, is being the catcher, I have a relationship with each and every pitcher. I have a relationship with each and every hitter. Um, I, I'm kind of that bridge between the, the pitchers and the hitters. And um, anytime that, that the catcher can be, uh, you know, kind of that, that general, the guy obviously on the field, he has to be the general. He's the only guy that sees everything that's going on. But uh, also just a, a calming effect, um, you know, but, but a guy that, uh, that, that, that can lead and, and be a be somebody that, that young guys can bounce things off. Um, you know, it goes a long way for, for a team at the end of the day. I'm not surprised by this uh, because you've improved greatly as a hitter over the, over the last couple of seasons. But uh, a lot of the guys have mentioned to me that they have gone to you for advice, Pete Alonzo uh, in particular, but there are others as well. And uh, it makes sense too. You're a catcher, you know, hitters. Uh, and uh, that, that's, uh, that, that's kind of nice to have. Yeah, um, I, I'm a big believer that that things happen for a reason. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's happened in my career is I've, I've had the ups and the downs. I've had um, good years and I've had bad years. And uh, I really think that, that part of that journey and part of my job as a guy that's been around is to share, uh, you know, my experiences and share what I what I know, um, that, that, you know, be a veteran guy that, that can help those young players to, to realize that, you know, everyone's going to go through a slump. Everyone's going to struggle at times. Um, but what what helps you come out of those those bad times is, is what makes you a good player. I loved your explanation before when you were with the Tigers and you were playing with Mickey Cabrera and other sluggers and maybe trying to emulate them a little bit as a younger player. But you know what? You went back and kind of rethought things and and things really took off from there. Yeah. Um, you know, as much as it was a, a blessing coming up with guys like that, it, it was as much a curse as well. Uh, seeing the things that they did, trying to do exactly what they do. Um, and it took me a little while to realize that that I can't do the things that Miguel Cabrera does. I can't do the things that J.D. Martinez does, but I, I can do things that, that James McCann can do and being content with that and uh, you know, staying within yourself and, and being the best you know possible. You know, James McCann is what led me to you know where I am today. 
Uh, speaking of sluggers, there's one in camp who wore a Met uniform for a long time, and he's a Hall of Famer, Mike Piazza. He spoke glowingly of you yesterday. I don't think you guys had ever met before, but uh, he was very impressed. I, I wonder whether you had, had watched him growing up. Was he, was he an idol of yours uh, growing up? I did watch him. Um, I remember when he was in a Dodger uniform, uh, and then obviously when he when he came over to the Mets, um, you know the, the the highlights of of his days in a Mets uniform. Um, you know, I I can never forget that, uh, especially you know the games, the Yankees Mets games. Um, mm-hmm. You know, those are those are memories I have sitting in my living room watching those games as a kid with my parents. So um, I definitely know knew who Mike was. Um, I definitely loved his game as a kid. Um, I, I can remember in the front yard. Uh, pretending to, to swing like Mike Piazza, you know, now here I am, you know, talking, talking baseball with him, talking, you know, trying to pick his brain and see what, uh, you know, he thought about this and what, you know, different things like that. Uh, he's, he's been, he's been really, really good to me um, in the short time. And I, I fully expect to, to be in contact with him and, and bounce different things off of him throughout, uh, throughout my time here. You know, I did a, a talk show in the uh, in the winter. One of my guests was Jerry Naren, who I've known for a while, and I know you know him very well. He uh, he also speaks very highly of you, and he uh, he went through some things with you, with, I guess, with your setup, and, and really helped you in that regard. Yeah, yeah. He, um, you know, he was able to identify part of why why my framing numbers weren't what what they should have been. Um, and it, and it had everything to do with my setup. He uh, from day one when I when I reached out to him, it was. It has nothing to do with your ability, has nothing to do with your hands, has everything to do with your setup. And, and that's why it was preventing you from getting strikes called. And uh, we made those adjustments and, um, you know, it's really taken off from there. You, uh, you cut Joey Lucchese last night. I'll ask you about some of the pitchers uh, and the churve has uh, obviously brought a lot of interest to him. And I think, uh, you know, to the team this year, um, but I think, I think he looked pretty good last night. What was your evaluation of, uh, of how he uh, pitched last night? Yeah, I thought he threw the ball well. Um, you know, he's uh, he, he's definitely. I don't. I've never even heard of a churve until until I met him. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, but uh, no, he's uh, he he's one of those guys that um, he's very deceptive in his delivery, um, and, and obviously he's got a pitch that that not many guys uh, throw. Um, and he he threw the ball well. I've, I've been impressed with the way he's gone about his business and the way that he uh, he attacks hitters. He's um, he goes right after guys and. Uh, really, anytime you got a guy that, that that fills up the zone and goes right after hitters, you're you're uh, as a catcher, you you enjoy that. We're watching Marcus Stroman today, and he's got the split change, but he looked like he had a pretty good slider there as well today, and he's he's thrown that a lot. What, what have you thought of Stroman thus far this spring? Uh, he's he's very talented. Um, he's as athletic as they come on the mound. Uh, he makes adjustments from pitch to pitch. He he understands uh, how his mechanics work, how his pitches work together. Um, and he is a guy that uh, that I look forward to, to catching because he he does have so many weapons to get hitters out with. Um, he's got every time I feel like he throws a bullpen, he's got a new pitch that he's he's uh, he's working on or he's throwing, and um, he's got a good feel. It, it's impressive how how quickly he he's able to make adjustments or, like I said, he's he's able to develop a pitch like that split change that he that he worked on. And Taiwan Walker obviously has uh, has opened some eyes too. We're we're not that familiar with him. Obviously, he signed as a free agent and was over in the other league most of the time. But uh, the uh, he, he's made a lot of strides this spring too. Yeah, Walk, um, great guy, and then obviously his stuff. He uh, a good four pitch mix has good feel for all of his pitches. Um, he understands how his pitches work. He's uh, he's he's very intelligent. And his work ethic, um, it's off the charts. I, I've really enjoyed getting to know him. Um, I'll catch him again tomorrow. And he is a uh, – I think he's going to be a guy that, that eats a lot of innings for us and, and throws the ball really well for us this year. James, I wanted to ask you about a couple of guys uh, in, in the bullpen uh, as well. Uh, one guy, before I ask about Diaz, who's uh, really kind of opened eyes this spring, uh, I wanted to ask about Miguel Castro, who uh, – he's not a dark horse. I, I think people know about him, but he, he seems to really be coming into his own right now. Well, first I, I can tell you, he is not a fun at bat. Um, I've faced <laughs> him and he is not somebody that I would choose to, to go hit off of uh, regularly. Um, he's got, uh, he's got really good stuff. He's coming at you with that, uh, you know, three quarter arm slot His mm-hmm. he, he's got such long arms. It's like he's handing the ball to, to the catcher when he releases it. Um, and he's he's shown a, a the ability to to control all of his pitches in spring training. He's thrown a slider and his changeup extremely well. 
Um, and then any t- anytime you're throwing 97, 98, it's, it's difficult on a hitter, but uh, especially with the sink that he's got and then the, the, um, the release point he's had, he has it, it. He's a tough at bat. We watched from afar as when Diaz had great seasons closing for Seattle and then came here and struggled. But last year he got back on track and this spring, he certainly seems to have towed that line and uh, picked up exactly where he left off. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's really learned um, himself. He's learned how his uh, how his mechanics work, how his w- w- when things go wrong, how to make the, the adjustment or how to fix it uh, quicker. And um, I mean, his it, when you look at his heat maps and you look at his his numbers, it's it's ridiculous. He he gets swing and misses at pitches right down the middle like nobody else in baseball. Um, his, his stuff is electric, and uh, there it's as it's as electric as it's going to come. Uh- James, this, this seems like a good lineup for you. I think it's going to be a good lineup, period. But uh, you've got power. You can go the other way. And we, we've seen both of that. Uh, almost anywhere you hit in this lineup, I think uh, you can you feel you can contribute. Yeah. No, I think um, for, for me personally, uh, my, my approach never really changes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the same guy uh, no matter where I'm hitting the lineup, no matter who I'm facing, uh, whether there's runners on base or runners in scoring position or nobody on base. Um, that that's part of my uh, my revelation as a hitter is uh, you know staying within myself and, and not trying to do too much and um, you know I'm, I I really view myself as somebody that uh, you know can like you said can drive the ball to the ballpark can can stay gap to gap can you know shoot a ground ball in the four hole for for a base hit or to move a runner whatever it is um, you know kind of kind of be a, a just a quality at bat every time you step in the box. And I know you're an Arkansas guy. Um, it's not Nolan Richardson and 40 minutes of hell, but uh, this is a pretty good uh, Razorback basketball team. So I would imagine you're getting uh, getting a kick out of that right now. It is. It is. Um, it's been fun to uh, to watch uh, Coach Musselman, you know, really bring the the, the program back uh, back into the spotlight, and um, you know, seeing what they're doing right now in the tournament. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they can keep going and and uh, keep dancing. James, listen, thanks very much for the time. Pleasure to have you here. Uh, welcome to New York again uh, and, and have fun this season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Take care.